here, Cerise here. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to Storytime again from Sosua Shores. This story comes to me from a gentleman by the name of Ken. But of course, you know, I keep the names confidential, so that's not his real name. Ken lives here now in the Dominican Republic for the past year. He relocated, and it has been a dream of his to do that for the last five years. Five years ago, he came here. Let's just do the backdrop on Ken. Five years ago, he came here for the first time, just as a little side, um, you know, kind of his, his, he said that it was a side trip for his friend. His friend was getting married and all of them were coming down here and they heard that it was a great playground. It was his first trip here five years ago. And they thought, you know what, let, let his friend have a lot of fun before he gets married. Well, what happened was the friend didn't end up getting married. The friend ended up meeting someone down here and then someone else and then someone else. He just, he just didn't want to have anything else to do with any women in North America. Well, during that trip, Ken also met someone. He met a young lady. Well, she's not really young. She's 35. She works in the bank. She lives in the campo. So like kind of like in the countryside. She works in the bank. Very nice young lady. She even has her own car. Um, and she, with no help from anyone. She lives with her mother. And she's a very nice woman. I spoke to her on the phone. And um, like through video chat on WhatsApp. And she really is a nice woman. Um, okay, but let's give you the backdrop on everything. Ken was married for 15 years. When he came here five years ago, he was married for 10 years. So the 10th year of his marriage, he was planning on getting a divorce from his wife. And the reason why he says is quite shallow. He knows and he's ready for you guys to tear him apart if that's what you do. But this is what he said. He said, fellas, listen. Um, and this is, these are his words. He's like, fellas, listen. I believe that when you're in a marriage, you give all you can give. I believe that when you marry someone, you do it for sickness and for health. When that person gets sick, you take care of them. But my wife, she made herself sick. She was addicted to food and never wanted to exercise, never wanted to do anything except eat and work. That's what he says. He says that she gained 80 pounds during the first year of their relationship. Never had children. She didn't gain weight from children. When they got married, he, they were only together for two years at the time when they got married. But he was aware that she used to be heavier before they met. But she maintained her weight for the two years of their dating and courting. And she was always in the gym and she was always eating healthy and making really healthy foods. And she kept it up for a good two years. He said he was so impressed because he's also a gym, a gym guy as well. But then he said she went through some kind of uh, depression. They let her go from her job. She went through depression. She was home all the time and she started to gain weight and it didn't stop. And the first year she gained 80 pounds and never lost it. Then she gained an additional 20. So that's 100 pounds. That's a whole other person that she became. Okay, pretty much. And he said that he didn't sign up for that. He didn't sign up for that type of sickness. He said she was self-inflicting pain and she was not trying to help herself. And he he said that he bought her memberships to the gym. He used to go for walks with her after work, like after he got off work. He helped her out. And he said even when she got her new job and she wasn't depressed any longer, she would still sit on the couch at night. And instead of going to the gym, she would eat cheese and crackers and drink wine. Or And he said it wasn't like a fancy kind of cheese and crackers and wine and, you know, your 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 slice meats and stuff. She, he said it wasn't anything like that. She would have the whole box of crackers. It's not like it was on a pretty little platter, he said. He said she would have the whole box of crackers, the whole chunk of cheese, and she would have the whole bottle of wine, all three of them right in front of her as she's watching TV, and she would demolish all of them in one night. 
And he said she would just do that. And on nights when she wasn't eating cheese and crackers and drinking wine, she would be eating cakes and chocolates and cookies and drinking wine. He said that's all she wanted to do. He told me that he threatened her over and over again. He even gave her papers one time for divorce and nothing helped. She just was, she would cry. She promised she'd change. A couple of times she lost like five pounds. She seemed like she was on a really good roll, but she just couldn't get back on that track and he said that he just couldn't respect her he could he started he, he stopped loving her and that was it he said by the time that he came here he was ready for a change and he made up his mind during his first vacation that he was going to retire here within a five-year period and that's what he has done but let me take you back to when he first got here for the first time. He met a female and he fell in love with that female. We're let's name her Rosie. He fell in love with Rosie and she's a girl from the Campo, really sweet girl, works in the bank, takes care of herself, has her own car. Nobody does anything for her. She's a really independent girl. Um, and so they just connect it. They really connect it big time. He started to plan his retirement and his divorce at the same time. So his first year with Rosa, with Rosie, he had to make sure that she was really as good as he thought she was. Once he figured out she was as good as he thought she was and that he got a good one, he started to invest more in her. So he started to invest more in her education. Um, she worked in finances, so he put her back in school to learn about international um, banking and Forex and, you know, like little side courses that she would take. Her English is phenomenal. She had a stepfather when she was growing up from Canada and he taught her English from, from ever since she was younger. He's passed on now, uh, but she loves him so much, she told me. And she said he taught her English. She speaks English very well, and she's never, ever left this country, ever. Like, she speaks English like a Canadian, eh? She even does the A as a joke, right? But she's like, she she really, really fun girl. Um, anyway, he... Uh, he wanted to help her. So that's what he started to do when he got back to New York City. He started to send money for her all the time. He also bought land here from her family. He knew he was buying it from her family. He got a really good deal on it. No rip off price. And they started to build a home there. And he was doing all this while at the same time trying to figure out how he was going to divorce his wife. His wife had no clue that his heart was like lost all love for her. She just got so stuck in the groove of their life, their boring life, that it became nothing for her. She didn't try to please him sexually. She didn't try to do anything like nothing at all. Even if he fell asleep on the couch, she wouldn't even care. There was absolutely no affection. They became like brother and sister. And he said she didn't even seem to mind until... Um, you know, he, he told me that uh, one time he made business cards up for Rosa, Rosie. He made business cards up for her in New York just before his trip here. So he was taking a trip here and he made up some cards for her and they were on the counter um, and he was about to pack them into his suitcase and his wife saw them and his wife said, who's this? Like, whose business cards are these? And he said it was a box of business cards, but there was one business card taped on the outside and you could see it was a woman's face. And he said to her, oh, it's a friend of mine in the Dominican Republic, but they, it was Rosie. And she said, the wife said, oh, you have a friend in the Dominican Republic? I thought you guys are going down there just like for guy trips all, every time you go. And he's like, yeah, it is a guy trip, but this is a woman. She's a banker and she's helping a couple of my guy friends out with a uh, a few um, purchases and stuff. And so I thought I'd get her some business cards made. And the wife was like, well, that's a pretty intimate gift, don't you think? Like, why doesn't she just get them done herself in the Dominican Republic? And he told her, oh, you know what, mind your business. This is a gift that I want to do for someone. 
He told me that he shouldn't have said that. He said he could have been nicer to her and, and said, uh, you know what, you're right. But uh, it was a good deal. So I thought, why not? She did. She did a great friend, a great favor for a lot of my friends. He told me he should have been sweeter to her. But at that point, he was just disgusted by her. And he knew that they he just needed to divorce her. Um, and I guess that's how couples get right after that many years of being together. Sometimes you have no patience for someone and you just want them to stop questioning you, especially if you don't love them any longer. So he packed his bags, went to the airport. And when he was here, uh, as he was with his girlfriend, the Dominican woman, guess who called the Dominican woman's phone, the wife, as they were together. Now the Dominican woman knew what the wife looked like because Ken showed her. Ken trusted the Dominican woman that much. He said, listen, this is my wife. This is the woman I'm going to be leaving. If for any reason you ever see her in person here, never answer any questions about me. You know why. And if you, for any reason she ever contacts you or if you ever hear her name in the streets, he said, I know you won't ever, ever. But if you do, you just play dumb until you and I are together and tell my divorce is final. And Rosie was down with it. She was cool with it. She knew that he didn't love his wife any longer. And, and she knew that he would have left her regardless. He wasn't leaving his wife for Rosie per se. He was going to leave the woman anyway, right? So um, when they saw the, the, the woman call, they saw the photo and they're like, oh, Okay, so he's like, don't answer it. Don't answer it. Just block her. Rosie listened. Rosie blocked her immediately. Now, what happened was this woman added Rosie, her phone number, into her phone number. You get what I'm saying? Into her contacts. So she added Rosie into her contacts. After she added Rosie into her contacts, a suggestion for her came up on Facebook. Once that suggestion came up for her on Facebook, she could see a profile pic of Rosie and Ken. The wife saw Rosie's. So this is what happens. And this happens with a lot of you guys as well. When you guys contact me through WhatsApp for an apartment or for business, for land, for airport pickup, drop off, or even just to meet up when you're here, I will, after a few conversations, program your number into my cell phone. So there have been a few times when once I program you into my cell phone, Facebook will suggest you as a friend because Facebook will say oh this person's in your contacts do you know they're on Facebook if not request their friend friendship and hey you're connected here too and um, that's what happened and so the woman she saw she she put Rosie's number into her phone and then when I guess when she was on Facebook the friend suggestion came up and she saw Rosie's photo with her husband well, she screenshot it immediately. She went and she screenshotted all the rest of the pictures because every single profile pic that Rosie had up on her Facebook was her and Ken for the last three years. Get that? The last three years. So this wife knew immediately that this was Ken's new woman. This wife looked at the dates. This wife looked at the comments, even saw her brother-in-law, Ken's brother, in support of the relationship. Ken's brother was friends with this woman on Facebook and commenting about, oh, look at the beautiful couple. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Ladies, could you imagine? <gasps> oh, my gosh. So, of course, the woman was, oh, she, after that many years of marriage, you know, at that point, it was 13 years of marriage. Okay, so she contacted um, Ken immediately and via WhatsApp, and she sent the photos. Who's this? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And Ken didn't answer. Ken looked at the photos, and he didn't answer at all. He was like, why? 
why ruin his vacation as he's here? He knew that when he got home, he would face the music. So he blocked her while he was here. Right? <laughs> I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm just laughing because the audacity. Like He was just like, you know what? I don't want to hear your music. Shut up. It was just anyway. So he said to me, I said to him, that was kind of cold. Why didn't you just talk to her? He said, because I didn't want her to ruin my vacation. And I was like, but why, like, why didn't you just tell her, like, that you'll talk, tell her, you'll fill her in when you get home or something? And he said, I've been trying to talk to that woman for so many years to lose weight. For 10 years, I told her to lose her weight and she never listened. And now she wants to talk to me about leaving. Now she wants to talk to me after I waited around for that long. He, he told me, he said, I could have slept with her sister. I could have slept with her best friend. I could have slept with her mother. But I was respectful and I didn't touch any of her friends or her family. But I also didn't touch her. He said, I was not attracted to her and I didn't cheat on her. The only time I cheated on her is when I found somebody suitable for me in the Dominican Republic. And that became my new woman. There were no questions to answer. And I said, okay, all right. And I said, well, what did you do next? Like how, when you got home, she was at the airport waiting for him. She never, ever picked him up from the airport before. When he exited that, those doors, he saw that she was standing right there waiting for him. And she walked over to him and he said to her, we're, we're over. We're done. I'm not coming home with you. I'm going to my brother's house. And she said to him, all right, so we're going to, you want a divorce? And he said, yes, please. And she said, okay, no problem. That wasn't it, though. That was not it at all. She came here. She came here. First trip she came here. She came for Brazilian butt lift, uh, uh, bus lift, uh, tummy tuck, like a whole entire body makeover. And she went back home and everything was fine. When she... He didn't even know that she came here to get all that done at all. He had no clue at all. And then he told me that she started to contact him and say, hey, how are you? You know, I really miss you. I wish we could go out somewhere and have dinner. When he was back in the States and everything, and he was like, no, 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 I'm loyal to my woman. You know, did you sign the divorce papers? We need to get this divorce over with and everything. And so she said, yeah, sure, why not? Like, you know, so she wanted to make him happy, but she also wanted him to see her new body and everything so she told him okay I signed the papers and she met up with them and um, he was surprised when he saw her he was like oh my gosh you look great and she's like thank you you know and she's like um, I went to the Dominican Republic to get it done and he's like oh that's great that's good and she said yeah and she said you know what when I'm feeling better I'm gonna go back down to the Dominican Republic and meet your girlfriend and he was like, well, why would you do that? And she said, because I can. I know what she, I know what she looks like. I know where she works. And I'm going to go show her the new me. I'm going to show her that I can get you back if I want you. And she was going on like that. And he was just like, whatever, like, whatever. Like, how could he stop her from coming here and going to see his girlfriend if she has all that information? And she did from the business card, right? Had the, um, the, the woman's uh, number and her little blog not really her website but it was like a blog with information and services that she provides and everything so the woman had her had her information he couldn't stop his wife or his separated wife from coming here and doing that um but you know what she didn't do that she got herself together and she came here and instead of bothering his girlfriend she went and she met the brother of the girlfriend. Now, how did she do this? Through Facebook. All through Facebook. She saw the family members. She went on to the woman's profile 
the about her. She saw the family members and she saw the brother and she felt like, you know what? The brother looks like a sanky panky and the brother looks like he would want a woman that has a little bit of money from America and looks like she takes care of herself because remember, she had that surgery and, and she got her Botox and she's looking good now. She's looking good like how she did before when Ken first met her. Of course, she's a little bit older, a little bit more mature, but I mean, hey, you get all that plastic surgery done and you're going to be looking fresh. So that's what she did. She contacted the brother on Facebook and she told him, oh, hi, you know, um, I just happened to be scrolling through some profiles. I'm interested in men in the Dominican Republic and I would like to come to the Dominican Republic. I noticed that you help provide tours for people. I would love to do a tour with you. And it was that easy. She came down here, got with him, hung out with him, and then said to him, can you take me to your family? Like, I want to meet your family and everything. Now, that was her game plan. Her game plan was to go and meet up with the girl that way and show the girl that she was with the girl's brother and the girl's jaw drop and go tell Ken. That's all, that's for me, that... For someone to do a plan like that makes them next to crazy, obsessed. Leave Ken alone, you know? I mean, you could have gotten him through the divorce. You could have gotten him financially. You could have done other things, but she didn't. She didn't take any money from him. It was a clean divorce. Um, the house, everything got sold. They went, they split everything down the middle. She was trying to give him an easy divorce because she was planning on eventually getting him back. Okay, but why do it like that? Why not just let the man go? If you love something, let set it free. If it's meant to, if it comes back, it was meant to be. Just make your life a lot easier and peaceful. Just leave it alone. Yeah, you're going to have some tears in your eyes. Yeah, you're going to have some sleepless nights. Yes, you might lose your appetite. Yes, you might gain your appetite. But at least your dignity is still intact, period. Well, this woman went with the guy to his family's house. And a lot of times Dominicans will do that. They will take you to their family because they're not hiding anything. And they're like, hey, um, if you have something to share with my family, I would love it. And that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to take food to, his, to the family. She wanted to, you know, do a whole cookout. And so, of course, um, she's like, make sure your whole family's there. I want to meet everyone, all your nieces, all your nephews. If you have any sisters, brothers. Of course, she knew that, like, who he had in his family. And he invited, of course, Rosie. And, of course, Rosie showed up. That's her brother. And she's about to meet her brother's new boy girlfriend from the United States. Rosie was too excited. Rosie showed up with a gift and everything. Well, when Rosie showed up at the door, Rosie immediately liked this woman. Rosie didn't know that Ken's wife went for a whole makeover. Rosie didn't know that Ken's wife lost all that weight. Now she looked like a different woman. She didn't even look like the same woman at all. That's what Rosie told me when Rosie spoke to me on the phone. Um, and the girl said to Rosie, um, oh my gosh, look at you. You're just so cute, so pretty. Do you have a boyfriend? Blah, 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 blah. Rosie told the woman all of the information about her boyfriend, how they met, and also spoke about the woman herself, the wife, and how the wife is jealous and how the wife is just really overweight and fat and how he doesn't love the wife any longer and how Rosie and him been long together for a long time and how he's moving to the Dominican Republic to be with Rosie and everything. The woman audio taped um, Rosie as Rosie was talking with her cell phone and she taped everything. She sent the tape to the husband and she said, good luck. And that was it. That was it. Nothing else. He hasn't heard from her again. He hasn't seen her again. He knows she's alive because she posts on her Facebook. And also the boyfriend, Rosie's brother, 
um, once he figured everything. Oh, oh, they didn't even know she was there with the whole family the whole night playing a double lifestyle, a double role. How crazy is that? And then after she left, like after she left, after the um, Rosie's brother dropped her off at her Airbnb, she was due for her flight in the next couple of days. He never heard from her again. She blocked him on Facebook. She blocked him on WhatsApp. And she didn't talk to anyone and any, any of them again. Not Rosie, not the boyfriend, and not Ken. She sent Ken the audio on WhatsApp and told him, enjoy his life. And that's it. Why do something so crazy? You know, and so Ken is now terrified. <laughs> Ken told me he's scared. He's like, Cerise, I'm telling you, I'm only telling the story because I want to get my story out there. He's like, I'm scared. She posts a lot on her Facebook page and her posts are not private. They're public. And she always posts like um, love memes and uh, revenge and stuff of that nature but she never bothers him and never contacts him and he's been living here for an entire year now an entire year they have their divorce so he was with Rosie for three years that's when she found out that he was with Rosie for three years for a whole year they went through the, their divorce that's when his ex-wife lost her weight went for her operation everything like that went to the Domin came to the Dominican Republic blah 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 did her little fiasco it all happened within a year's time and that's it he came here and he hasn't heard from her and he's terrified because she knows where Rosie lives Rosie's mother lives uh, Ro Rosie lives with him now because he's retired for a year and he lives here now and Rosie lives with him but this woman the ex-wife knows where Rosie's mother lives because Rosie's mother has um, like their own property um, and she's not going to move you know and he said that the woman he thinks his ex-wife lost her mind and he's terrified that she may come here one day and try to kill him so that's a different kind of, kind of turn of events. Like she went from a uh, thousand, never mind a hundred to zero. She went from a hundred, I mean, from a thousand to zero to nothing at all. Maybe she had a wake up call. Maybe she needed to hear it from Rosie's mouth. Maybe she realized, you know what? This is what he left me for. This is what he can have because I got to thank him for leaving me. Look how good I look now. You know what I mean? Like, it could be that it, it could be that she's just putting up means of revenge because she's feeling angry still, but it doesn't mean she's going to kill him. That's what he feels like. He feels like she is so angry and crazy. What woman finds out where the other woman lives and goes to her house with her brother? Like, you get what I mean? She did a lot of investigating, a lot of research. She got to the bottom of a lot. I know there's a lot of crazy women out there that do some crazy, crazy ass things. But this really, to me, kind of takes the cake. You come to another country and you do something trifling, but you don't stick to it. I mean, I'm not saying she needed to stick to it. And I'm not saying she needs to go kill anyone either. Like, God forbid. But what I'm saying is, what? What? I just, I told him, I said, you know what? I think at the end of the day, she had a wake up call. That's it. She's just like, yo, like, here's the conversation. I know what happened now. I know what went on. Have a good life. And I think that's what it is. Yeah, she was crazy the way she handled it, but she wasn't getting much other information. And I, I don't know, maybe she, that was, that was something good for her. Now, I just got to say, when it comes to cheating, it's not a good thing. But when it does happen to someone, guys, I would say do what she did. Clean yourself up. Pick yourself up and say goodbye. Sometimes you need closure. I think when she went to Rosie's, she had no choice but to come here to the Dominican Republic anyway. She probably came back here for a checkup on her operation it was all within the one year right she probably came back for a checkup she probably decided that she was going to check rosie and her family out did all her little facebook researching and everything and then she probably felt stupid because now she looks so good she's probably like why am i even wasting my time any longer like pff, please 
And I will say um, that she looks good. Like Ken showed me some photos <laughs> of her now. Ken said, shoot, she looks some good. And Rosie is cute. Rosie is cute. Um, the two, I cannot compare the two because uh, the wife, well, the ex-wife, she's tall and fit. Like she just looks stacked. Like she looks, she looks tall and fit. And I'm tall. I'm a tall woman. I'm five nine myself. So maybe I'm just biased that way, right? But um, she looks, she looks fit. She looks good. And I would say that. And and I know that Rosie might be listening to this. And Rosie, I'm so sorry, but the two of you are two different women, two different body shapes. And you gotta admit that Ken's ex-wife did fix herself up well and she's looking good she's looking hot and um rosie you're beautiful too you're beautiful too um but um you know i think ken got tired of the strong and wrong woman and he likes the meek and mild woman now rosie's more meek and mild and tiny and pretty and you know she's she's not all about that latin affection either ken told me ken said she's not all about you know affection and everything but she takes good care of him you know she cooks for him he wakes up to the smell of coffee and, and breakfast cooking and you know his favorite channel on television rosie takes care of him completely he's he said his clothes always smell so good like fresh linen and the food is always so fresh and she doesn't ask him for anything and she still works she still works so that's pretty good oh and that looks like i'm getting a phone call oops they hung up but um yes guys i gotta tell you she um you know at the end of the day that's how it ended and ken is happy ken said you know although his ex-wife looks really good and she's you know looking like how she did back in the day he's still not very attracted to her um and that rosie rosa rosie is his new girlfriend and his new wife his new esposa and that's who he loves he says because really when he was treated so well from her for so many years um he's not going to give that up now just because his wife is looking good um he said he fell in love with rosie and he's keeping it like that. So, Ken and Rosie, thank you for your story. I'm glad Rosie treats you like a king, the way you want to be treated. And I'm glad you guys are in love and you're happy. And I really hope that the ex-wife finds somebody that she can love too. He says that he has been looking at her Facebook page. Her and Ro Him and Rosie look at the woman's Facebook page often because they're always looking to see if she's posting vacation time. <laughs> they're terrified that she's going to come here and kill them. She won't, though. I don't think she will. Come on now. She probably, like, again, had a wake-up call. She's probably like, this is who he's choosing because it's not like the both women look the same. They are completely opposite, complete opposites. And so the woman probably thought, the wife probably thought, all right, this is what he wants, let him have it, right? But they're still terrified because she let go of him so easily. <sighs> if your wife lets go of you so easily after she saw the light, be happy. Don't wonder. But at the same time, he does. you can never be too careful. All right, guys, maybe that's what I should call this story. Never be too careful. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It is a wonderful, beautiful, sunshiny day here in the Dominican Republic. I'm going to enjoy it. If you have any stories at all, you can send them to me at 829-702-7726. Your photos and your names will be kept totally confidential. I love you guys. Have yourself a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. Big blesses. Every single day